M. Skull 01, Madison Skull, Eli Riffs, whatever you want to call him, a pioneer that established a very important standard in the commentary community, random humor. This man made commentaries funny with his groundbreaking series, Insert Something Is Not Funny. Without him, the commentary community would have died in 2010. However, M. Skull 01's popularity ultimately led to his downfall. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the rise and fall of M. Skull 01. It all started in 2008 when Red Super Ray pioneered what is now known as the Let's Play community. At the time, Red Super Ray would commentate on bad video game reviewers and thus the commentary community was born. Knowing that M. Skull 01 was on YouTube as early as November 2006, he was fascinated by the humorous aspect of commentaries. In 2009, a homosexual commentator by the name of Boomstick545 made a huge impact on the commentary community with a combination of counterarguments and humor. Boomstick was put on the map for his commentaries on Chris Chan and Darkness the Curse. M. Skull 01 was blown away by this. Thus, in late 2009, Mskull01 came up with a revolutionary commentary series called Insert Something Is Not Funny. Unfortunately, since Mskull01's original account was terminated in late 2012, I don't know what was the first Insert Something Is Not Funny video. One of Mskull01's oldest survived videos happens to be Josh Is Not Funny. If I'm not mistaken, this was a commentary on a controversial user named Josh YouTuber. He was a kid known for going on tirades regarding video games, violence, atheism, and of course, haters. In 2010, Mskola One's commentaries were gaining attention in the commentary community. The fast-paced, humorous interjections, the blunt counterpoints, and the timing of the events in question was the formula to Mskola One's success. As 2010 went by, M. Skull 01 in the commentary community was in for one wild ride. M. Skull 01 became super popular in 2011 for his commentaries, Up Till 89 is not funny. What you're about to see is stupid. The problem with some of you is that you felt it wise to take it to the extreme by calling me a furry. Please. Just because I make a list of the top 10 anthropomorphic characters that I have to dig are hot doesn't make me a furry. I'm sorry, I can't do this with a straight face! Number 10 is to call the Echidna. She was named after an ancient Mayan city of the same name and is the daughter of the Echidna tribe chief, Pakamak. Pakamaka, Shakamaka, Sisumba! Her supernatural power is pyrokinesis. Wouldn't you love to have that power? No, thank you. I don't smoke. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. You don't need flint and tinder to start a fire. Motherfucker, we talking about real pyrokinetics, bitches! All you need to do is think about fire, thrust your arm forward, and whoosh! The wood is burning. And so is the rest of my house. Way to go! Sailor Mini Moon is not funny. This reviewer basically doesn't like the idea that we don't cut things out of our videos. You see, says Sailor Mini Moon, cutting out things in my videos would require some effort on my part. Isn't it enough that I'm playing with dolls on the internet? Wait, I am a doll, so... Uh... Sailor Mini Moon says. We used to, and we got we didn't got laryngitis on two several occasions, so we don't do that anymore. Does it really hurt to make your voice sound like this? I don't know. You see, did you see videos where we're busting things? Step into the club with a section of Gyro's not funny. <laughs> oh no! I just got shot. Zero. What have you done? Who laughs like that? Oh, Mother Africa. Oh, it's done. Well, I guess we all learned a valuable. And consequences will never be funny. My personal favorite was called Juggalos are not funny. Why? Because M. Skull 01 literally could not keep a straight face throughout the majority of the video and the Juggalo in question made me laugh hard. I wish somebody mirrored Juggalos are not funny because it was one of the funniest M. Skull 01 commentaries that I've ever seen. On March 11th, 2011, 
Japan experienced an 8.9 earthquake that caused many people to die and almost caused a total nuclear meltdown. Life in a Tent made a pretty insensitive video exploiting a natural disaster. Anyway, uh, thumbs up this video for epic earthquake, and, and I'm not trying to make a joke of this. This is a pretty epic size earthquake. It's a 8.8. .8. A user by the name of Space Guru 5 showed the video to Mscola 1 and did a one-shot commentary which was titled, The Archfiend Called It. Obviously, Life in a Tent declared war on Mscola 1 and threatened to flag down his video. Mscola 1 said no to taking down the video, but Life in a Tent saw to it that he was serious about it. Obviously, M. Scola 1 was furious and Life in a Tent told him to make a response video. Well, M. Scola 1 did on his Blip account. The reason for that was because Blip at the time was a great place for commentators to protect their videos from false DMCA claims. The moment Life in a Tent got wind of this, he went on Blip TV and started enough drama for a new daytime television show to be formed. As a result of the war with Life in a Tent, M. Scola 1 eventually blocked him for the following. Harassment, threats, and slander. This incident slowly changed M. Scola 1 from super humorous to a little more critical. In 2012, M. Scola 1 did two commentaries that got him flack. The first commentary was on a user named P.M. Rance. You said it, Professor Farnsworth. You said it. I'm just gonna be blunt here. Fuck you, you pretentious asshole. Are you this full of shit that you can't even comprehend what you're doing? You're talking about kids here. Kids! Look, I've done commentaries on kids before, and you know what? It was dubbing me for even doing that. You know why? Because they're fucking kids. Of course kids are gonna make stupid shit. Of course kids are gonna like stupid shit. Their standards for quality are generally low. And here's something else about kids you may not know. Um, kids grow up. They learn about past experiences. Their standards for quality improves. But you're just standing there going, oh, these video makers are the downfall of society. No, they aren't, you cunt. They're just kids making shitty music videos. M. Scola 1 was angry because PM Rants listed children as the most hated YouTubers that people watch. Considering that the backlash of the commentary was huge, M. Scola 1 apparently deleted the video prior to his termination. The other commentary, Smegheads Are Not Funny, was a co-op featuring M. Scola 1's friend, 1T Brett. This video originally was uploaded on the M. Scola 1 account prior to his termination. It's unclear as to who flagged down M. Scola 1's channel and what the video in question it was that got flagged down. To any longtime fan of M. Scola 1, leave a comment in the comments section because it was never explained. Nonetheless, M. Scola 1 and 1T Brett went on a huge, A. Salieri-style tirade on Hardcore Kid, A-Log, Waymu, Mr. Diablo Lord, Hero of Tomorrow, I'm not afraid of it, but I hate it! Ah! Ah! and Diala Bawaku, because of how the list was organized. M. Scola 1 was furious because Hardcore Kid thought that homosexual stereotypes, sonic fags, and children were worse than making fun of rape victims. This commentary didn't just give Hardcore Kid backlash, but it also gave M. Scola 1 backlash as well. After Smegheads Are Not Funny was released, M. Scola 1 was terminated for an apparent false DMCA claim. The aftermath of M. Scola 1's termination meant a legacy was ruined. A channel that was the first commentary channel to have 5,000 subscribers. This channel wasn't necessarily the beginning of the end as M. Scola 1 created a new channel called Eli Riffs. Now, M. Scola 1 did re-upload certain commentaries on his channel and did random videos until he riffed on a video called Riff, Bumping Ponies Off My Cellular Phone. The riff was basically audio-ducted commentary with some jokes here and there. But it was dark times for M. Scola 1 as the commentary community was in trouble. In November of 2013, a conservative commentator slash rancher named Beastly Evie made a video explaining her stance on homosexual marriage and why she did not agree with it. This led to responses from multiple users. Unfortunately, M. Scola 1 of all people said some harsh things to Beastly Evie, immediately ruining her credibility on YouTube. A lot of Evie's loyal fans were crushed due to M. Scola 1 demoralizing her over a dissenting opinion about homosexual marriage. As a result of the incident, Beastly Evie retired from commentaries and made other videos. After a while, Beastly Evie went on hiatus until July 31st, 2015. 
Then she made one more video on September 2nd, 2015, and it was met with backlash. Since then, it is unknown if Beastly Evie is still around. But make no mistake, she never truly recovered from the MSKOL01 tirades on social media and any place else on the internet. This was perhaps the darkest time in MSKOL01's YouTube career. On December 17th, 2013, MSKOL01 officially made his last commentary titled, Commentators Are Not Funny. It was a commentary on a popular user named TOG Professor, explaining why he did not identify as a commentator. This was the darkest time for the commentary community. Even so, both MSKOL and TOG presented terrible points which led to backlash. The era of MSKOL01 ended as a mediocre commentary group called Bunch of Pseudo-Intellectuals began. As some of these commentators looked up to MSKOL01 was apparently disrespected by him, citing that the group would not succeed. After multiple arguments and being called a social justice warrior, MSKOL01 finally had enough and declared his Eli Riffs account dead. Since then, Bunch of Pseudo-Intellectuals is still a mediocre commentary group that is struggling to restore the glory of the commentary community. MSKOL01, a once popular user that was the backbone of the commentary community. The first commentator to reach over 5,000 subscribers. A user that proved that humor was more important than just countering points in a commentary. A user that inspired Youngblood Fantasy 91, Azumanga Daiofan 101, etc. Let's not forget that there were good times and bad times in the history of the commentary community. The extremely funny moments where people were happy, and the extremely sad moments where people go crazy over trivial things. I sincerely hope someday that I can conduct an interview with Beastly Evie over the incident. I think her getting crapped on over something that happened years ago is unjustified. And I dedicate this documentary to the longtime fans of Madison Skull. Good day.